James chapter 5 verses 13 through 20 is anyone among you suffering let him pray is anyone cheerful let him sing psalms is anyone among you sick let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise up him and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven confess your trespasses to one another and pray for each other that you may be healed the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit brethren if any among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins amen Christ is my reward and all of my devotion. Now there's nothing in this world that can ever satisfy. Through every trial, my soul will say, no turning back have been set free Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me Everything I need is in you Everything I need Christ my only Lord The joy of my salvation Now this hope will never fail Cause heaven is our home Through every storm my soul will say, Jesus is here, to God be the glory. Christ is enough for me, Christ is enough for me. Everything I need is in you. Everything I need I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back, no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus No turning back, no turning back The cross before me, the world behind me No turning back, no turning back The cross before me, the world behind me no turning back, no turning back. Christ is enough.
enough for me Christ is enough for me everything I need is in you everything I need Christ is enough for me Christ is enough for me everything I need is in you everything I need I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back oh, wow. Heard a thousand stories of what they think you're right And I heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night And you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Oh, and I see. Many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Cause you're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to love so undeniable like I can hardly speak peace so unexplainable like I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love 
Love, you're a good, good father It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am You're a good, good father It's who you are, it's who you are it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To Welcome to the Kelly Community Bible Church and uh, we want to thank you for turning on and viewing this morning and it is difficult as I said to have church actually church but we are live streaming so we pray that you will tune on on 8 o'clock Sunday morning and uh, this is my last message on the book of James my last message on the book of James and uh, my message is taken from James, our scripture reading, which is our scripture reading, James 5, 13 through 20, and how to pray about your problems. How to pray about your problems. Tell me about it. Who doesn't have any problems? I think all of us do have problems, but many times we just don't want to pray about our problems. In fact, the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and very effective. James chapter um, 5 verse 16 tells us that. James had a repetition of being a man of prayer. Psalms 147 and verse 10 tells us the Lord taketh no pleasure and we see here in the evilness of men. And prayer is the greatest privilege of the Christian life. Prayer is the area test to test the power of the Christian life. Anything God can do be done through prayer. Jesus said, the things I do, you will do also, even greater works. How do you do greater works than Jesus? The next verse under that tells us it is by prayer. Prayer is our greatest failure. We don't really, you know, we, we don't plan to fail, but we fail to plan. And it's if, when that's the same thing with prayer. And we fail to pray. It's the greatest failure in the Christian life. Often people are not satisfied with prayer. We look at when we pray and the kind of uh, prayer that they pray. And how can we pray effectively? So, as we pray this morning, Father, we thank you for your love, for your grace, and we pray for all those who are listening to this message this morning, that you will open their hearts and mind, that they can take it in and be very receptive to it, and also make it applicable to li their lives. If there is any who have never trusted you as Savior, can recognize that you love them and made a payment for their sins, and by accepting you as Savior, they can know they have eternal life and heaven will be their home. We also pray for those who are saved, that they can take the initiative to really take time to pray. We ask your blessing now in Jesus' name. Amen. When should I pray? When I am hurting emotionally? And verse 13 tells us that, is any among you in trouble? He should pray. Trouble means to suffer misfortune, to be in distress, to be under pressure and today we can say that he is talking about internal stress that is caused by external circumstances when life gets hard james says you need to pray 
In fact, the book of Psalms 18, 4 tells us, In my distress, the Psalm David said, uh, David in the book of Psalms said, In my distress, I call who? Unto the Lord. Above all, my brothers, do not swear. Why under tension? Why under tension? You attempt to swear. When you are under stress, you have two alternatives. Swear or pray. You know, uh, is anybody, anyone happy? Let him sing songs and praise. Enjoy what God is doing. Joy is contagious. You would notice that when, you know, let's have fun in church. Let's clap. Let's praise the Lord. And everybody um, sat doing it. And we see here, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is valid to be happy. Praise is used 550 times in the Bible. It is also, uh, we see here, as a lifestyle of the Christian to be happy. You know, and it's so important that God wants us to be happy. God wants us to be happy. You know, when I look around in the world today, what is happening, it is very, very scary. Because when we look back, when we look in the world, we will see that people are doing just like what happened just before the flood. They were, they were doing all kinds of things just like Sodom and Gomorrah and sin, sin that is unbelievable, turning their back on God. And God finally brought judgment upon uh, the, the world with the flood upon Sodom and Gomorrah and uh, he destroyed. And uh, today we are seeing the same things. You talk to people, people don't care about God. They don't want to hear about God. And even Christians are backsliding now. You know, you ask Christians sometime, you know, uh, do you read your Bible? Do you pray? And um, when I get around to it, you know, that's the problem today. But I believe God has put us in a tight squeeze where we can be, where we'll have to. And it's getting worse in the world today. And let me say something for those who forget God. The Bible tells us that in Luke chapter 12, verse 47, And that servant which knew the Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. We are seeing that today. Another one in the book of Psalms, in chapter 50 and verse 22. Now consider this. They, he that forget God, God says, I will tear you into pieces and there will be none to deliver you. And that's, the, that's, you know, God has given us the great opportunity where we can go to him, first of all, in prayer here. When, when again to pray? When I'm hurting. When I'm hurting physically. Is anyone among you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him. And anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. That's, that's so important today. Nothing wrong in doing something like that today. And sometimes people misuse it and we don't have to misuse it. If he had sinned, the Bible says, he will be forgiven. Sin, sick, sick means without strength, fatigue, bedridden, serious illness. And we have some very, very serious illness today. The same words were describing Lazarus when he was sick. When you are beyond the help of a doctor, what do you do? We have to go to the Lord. Now, the Lord is not the last resort. We know that. Uh, he's the first, first one we go to. But um, we have to look to Him in prayer. There are three kinds of sickness the Bible talks about. Sickness for death. That is in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 16. The kind of sickness God allows to take us home to be with Him. And sometimes God says, well, I'm finished with you now and you need to come home. And that's another sickness. That's one of the, another one is number two says, sickness of discipline. Because of sin in our lives, God has to discipline us. In many, many ways, He has disciplined us. I know in my life He has disciplined me. And I'm pretty sure you can say that in your life. And always remember, we all have choices in whatever we do. 
but our choices and consequences we don't have. God is the one who will deal with that. Sickness for the glory of God. And you know, that is so wonderful to know that sickness that God wants to heal you of and let it be a testimony to the world. You know, that's, that's another sermon we can preach where people have got sick and God has healed them and God has used them greatly. And uh, I even think of mine and so on, so about 10 years ago also, I was very, very sick with each one and one. And I thought, well, I would make it, but God didn't, um, God, God did not uh, ready for me as yet. So we have to be careful that God will use this. And by the way, we can use whatever we are sick for testimony sake. And we see here, you have five attitudes toward healing. That God wants to heal us through prayer. And we see here, um, we see here sometime that in healing, what we call the sensationalists, they get on TV and they put on the bright lights and they advertise miracles and they put roll on the TV cameras and they highly charge the emotional atmosphere. Be careful. Be careful. Why? Because Jesus did exactly the opposite of that. He took people aside often. He often told them um, to tell no one. Jesus never manipulate people or use them for show. And I've seen that people will show how, uh, on TV how they have, this person has been healed and they testify and so on. Well, I don't want to be uh, hard on them, but I'll tell you this. If these people claim that they can heal, I would love to see they do something about our co corona uh, virus that we have right now. You know, God is telling us something here. Be careful because most of the time these people want the glory and God doesn't want them to get the glory. He has to get the glory. Then we have the confessionalists. Just because something is a, just because something is a miracle does not mean it from God. Remember Moses? Moses laid down his stick and it became a snake. Pharaoh, uh, um, we see it becomes a snake. And we see Pharaoh here, we, he tell his men to do the same thing and they did it. But just because something is done in the Lord does not necessarily mean it is done in the name of the Lord. Some of you remember in the book of Matthew chapter um, 7 and verse 23 said, Lord, we did all those wonderful work. And then he said, I unto you that I never knew you. You see, let me read that verse with That's an important portion of scripture in the book of um, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 23. And uh, it says here, verse 21 to 23, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Now, the will of the Father here is very, very important to, ex to understand. You'll get to that in a while. He that doeth the will of the Father, which is in heaven. Many will say unto me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and then cast out devils, and in thy name have done so many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Now, I believe they did all this, but one thing they did not do. One thing they did not do. They did not do the will of the Lord. What is the will of the Lord? In the book of John, and chapter 6, and verse 40, and this is the will of the Lord. It says here, and this is the will of him that sent me. Everyone that seeth the Son, and believeth in him, uh, uh, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up in the last day. Very important to note. <coughs> so, they did all these wonderful works. And yes, we have seen the devil cast out de demons too. I've seen that many, many times. And we see here where the, the, the confessionalists will say, it is always God's will to be healed. No, it's not. They call it a name it and claim it game, a group. They say all sickness is a result of sin. No, 
we see here the Bible tells us here is important that we are born with sin and in this flesh that here is very sinful one of these days God is going to take that away many people are under a great deal of guilt because of this wrong teaching just if somebody tell you you know why why you sick because of sin in your life well what about Job he didn't have any and he was sick God had a purpose for it you see that's the problem of legalism it imposed false guilt and take the joy knowing Jesus is the only way you know that we have to be very very careful because a lot of people today are not teaching Jesus is the only way anymore Jesus is the only way we know that the Bible tells us that and they claim that they, they claim that suddenly and the problem with with that it makes God a genie suddenly God is serving me my needs my and all that uh, you know I need he gives according to his will and always remember he gives according to his will my God shall supply all my needs not my greeds according to his will those that suffer according to the will of God what do they do you know with this verse here we suffer to do God said once you live godly you're going to suffer you know we're going to go through some real rough times but we have to stand firm in the Christian faith so we see here it is important to understand the extremists now not only the sensationalists the confectionists um, confessionalists but the extremists God does not heal in any way form or fashion today they throw the baby out with the bath water well Jesus said uh, he's the same yesterday today and forever we know God does hear calling to his will um, one of these days we will be completely healed when we are taken to heaven then we have what we call the um, rationalists they say it is all in your mind you sick because you think you sick we have a, a cult in the world today call themselves Christian science I remember talking to one of the young boy when I had a um, a youth meeting when I was going to Bible College and we had a youth meeting in Fort Lauderdale and one of them told me he said when he came that day he said my uncle think he is sick I said okay and two weeks afterwards he came back again I said how was your uncle he said my uncle think he is dead you see we have to be careful all right then we have the realists that's the name that's what James would, would claim to be the realist recognizing two facts God still does heal God does heal it, it if it is his will but not everyone gets healed you remember the Apostle Paul oh he prayed and prayed and prayed and asked God to take away that thorn in the flesh and he didn't sometimes God allow those things in our lives so we can keep closer to him well what do we do when you get sick call on the spiritual leaders in your church to pray for you this implies the support for a need of joining a local church and that's why they that's why when you get saved that you need to join a local church if you get sick you should call the elders of the church where you belong to as a member the word sick in the Greek means life-threatening illness oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit and aid of faith to uh, faith no power in, in the oil it is just a symbol it was the prayer of faith and what he said the result of praying he said I will raise him up in the last day this method should be used in the Bible churches um, nothing wrong in that but sometimes it's low-key of praying for people going there but people call all the time for the elders of the church to pray over them however let me give you a little caution here because what is going around we have the Kobe virus and we have to be very very careful um, many times people have called I know people who have called who are sick with the virus and uh, I cannot go to lay hands and pray on them I think that that is you can't mix faith and foolishness I think we can we can stay home I call many many times I've talked to people over the phone and pray with them over the phone we have technology now that we can use that you know it, it wasn't in the days of, of, of the Apostle Paul we didn't have this kind of technology just like we have the technology right now what we are using you know 
if we didn't have this, we couldn't get out the message to you. But thank God that we do have it. And we can get out the message to you. And I want you to really pray. Pray for us in our school. We are thinking to um, do the same thing with the school and teaching. So that's something you can pray for us uh, um, that. When I'm hurting spiritually, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. It is not what you eat. It is not what you eat. It is what eats you. Get resentment, anger, etc. out of your life. Get it out. It's always in the power of God to heal. It's not always God's purpose. God, confess your sins to each other. Keep a clear conscience. Very important. Very important. Revealing your feelings is the beginning of healing. Not to get up and blab about your faults to the whole church. You know, God doesn't want you to do that. You know, it is so important. That's why the Bible tells us, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. You know, we, we are seeing so much hate out there now. Where is that coming from? We don't have long to live. We just have a short time. And God is waking us up and telling us that we need to reach souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to encourage souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. There are so many people out there in the world now just turn their back and hate God. But uh, there is one who just recently said he don't believe there is a God and he don't believe in Jesus Christ. Well, sad enough, I saw it in Facebook. I wrote back a little note. I said, one of these days you're going to stand before him in the great white throne judgment and then you will recognize that he is the true and living God. What kind of person can pray? Ordinary people? Ordinary people? Now, people might think, well, I can't pray. I've heard people say this, I can't pray. Listen, as long as you can talk, you can pray. All right? I'm not saying if you're dumb, you can't pray. Yes, you can still pray too, but I'm talking about people say they can't pray and they're scared. No, God tells us to pray. You know, our prayers will be powerful. God wants us to talk to, to him. Elijah was a man like us. <laughs> but the great lesson we learned from Elijah, he was not perfect, but he prayed. Daniel is another great example. Before he was thrown in the lion's den, he prayed. He prayed and God bless him, God deliver him, God make him, you know, one of the the second man and the ruler there yeah, in, the, in, the, in, in the palace. You know, God can do wonders. I even think back at my life, you know, I, I remember when people tell me here, when we first started in this in Kelly community here, and we started this the, with the youth ranch, people laugh at us and they say, what are you doing? And that's 47 years ago. And when I look back, I can thank the Lord for all that he has done through me. All right, I don't want any glory for it. It's all the glory goes to the Lord. And, but it is important that you reach soul. And we have reached with the ministry here thousands of souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. How can I pray effectively? Four conditions for praying effectively. One, you must ask. You must ask. If you don't ask, you wouldn't receive. You do not have, why James says in chapter 4 verse 2, because you do not ask God. And one of the key things is to be specific in your prayer. I have been doing that. I, I, can, I can give you some examples, which I don't have time to do that now. But I have seen that we have prayed for certain things. We have prayed for people to get saved. And we have seen how God has saved them. The young lady who sang, Massey. We had prayed for her dad and mom for years. We didn't give up. And guess what? God saved them. And they're serving the Lord today. Have the right motive. When you ask, you do not receive. Sorry, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motive. What that you may spend, 
what you get on your pleasures. What God is saying here is this. And James in chapter 4 and verse 3 says that. It says, when you ask, don't ask in the wrong motive. Ask that you can use whatever that God blesses you with to use it for the Lord. You know, God has blessed us with so many things, even I can say for myself, in our home. Almost 90% of what we have is God used people to give and bless us with it. And we thank God for that, how He has used us. You know, the other thing too, which is not only have the right motive, not only I must ask, um, uh, we see here, but also have a clean life. What do we mean by a clean life? The Bible tells us here in fifth chapter of James chapter 5, verse 16b, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It's very effective. And God wants us to make sure that our heart, that's why David says, created me a clean heart of God. So, you know, that uh, I can be blessed. Also, the Bible tells us in the book of First Peter, if a husband and wife do not have a right relationship, God will not answer your prayer. And God also says that if there is sin in your life, He will not answer your prayer. So we need to take care of that. How important is your prayer life? How is it important? It's very, very important. You know, do you pray for the lost souls? Do you? It is very important. You see, if you are there and you listen to me, and you have never trusted Christ as Savior, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says the payment for sin is death. If we have to pay for it, we'll be separated from God. The Bible also tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son, who was perfect without sin, came and made a complete payment for our sins. Died, buried, and rose again. Let me show you something here very quickly. Let my left hand represent you and me. My wallet represents sin. My right hand represents the Lord Jesus Christ. If we want to have fellowship with Christ, sin is separating us. We can't get rid of that with our good works. The Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved you and me. Let my right hand represent Christ. My left hand represent you and me. My wallet represents sin. For God so loved the world, you and me, that He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever, not join the church, not give, not turn, but whosoever believe, believe what? That he died, buried, and rose again for our sin. But the moment we believe that, he said, I will give you, take all that sin, pay for it. You don't have to pay for any and give you eternal life. How long is eternal life? Forever. When do you have it? The moment you trust him as Savior. And now we don't serve the Lord to be saved. We don't serve the Lord to get to heaven. We serve the Lord because we are saved and because we are going to heaven. How important is their prayer life to you? I pray that you will understand it's very, very important. That is the power. That is the light in you. And what, what a privilege that you and I who are saved have that opportunity to go to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ personally and talk to Him. We can talk to Him and listen. He's always there to listen. This brings us to the end of the study of James. His emphasis has been spiritual maturity. This would be a good time for us to examine our own hearts to see how mature we are. Here are a few questions to assist you as I go through some of the things I said in the messages previously. Am I becoming more and more patient in the testing of life? Do I play with temptation or resist it from start? Do I find joy in obeying the word of God or do I merely study it and learn it? Are there many prejudices that shackle me? Am I able to control my tongue? Am I a peacemaker rather than a troublemaker? Do people come to me for spiritual wisdom. Am I a friend of God or a friend of the world? Do I make plans without considering the will of God? Am I selfish when it comes to money? Am I unfaithful in paying my bills, including my tithes to the Lord? Do I naturally depend on prayer when I find myself in some kind of trouble? Am I the kind of person others seek for prayer 
support. What is my attitude towards the wandering brother? Do I criticize? Do I gossip about him? Or do I seek to restore him in love? If we can answer some of these questions positively, let me say this. We need to continue not to grow old, but we need to continue growing up. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful and thankful for your love. We pray, Lord, for those who are listening uh, right now that you will just bless them. If they have never trusted you as Savior, they can say in their mind and heart right now, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I cannot pay for my sins, but you made that complete payment for my sins. And Father, I want you to save me now. And he would save you. And he would give you eternal life. And he will give you a home in heaven. And after you have trusted him, God wants you to pray, read your Bible, study, uh, tell others about Jesus Christ, how they can know they're going to heaven. Also attend a good Bible believing church. And Father, we pray, Lord, that you will open the doors of the church soon again. Because we need that fellowship with one another. We pray that something is going to work out as quick as possible. According to your will, not our will. And Father, we pray for those who are from this church also. And all the churches around the world, the Bible believing churches. That the members will stay, stand firm and stay close to you, Lord. We ask your blessing upon all. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue to get rid of this virus. And help everyone to understand that you are in charge. And you want to save them. And Father, we pray right now, there are many out there who uh, don't believe in God and don't believe in, in the Bible. And we pray, Lord, that you would do something to get them to trust you as Savior. We ask your blessing upon all now, Lord. Give us a wonderful day, and we ask you to guide and protect. Cover us with your blood. And build a hedge around us that when Satan attack, he will not be able to penetrate through. And we pray for all those people who are sick with the COVID-19. If they have trusted your Savior, Lord, heal them. If they haven't trusted your Savior, Lord, still heal them. But also, we want them to get saved. We ask your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord bless you. And any way we can help spiritually, just let us know. And we will let you know when church open back, uh, whenever the government give us the okay. Uh, Lord bless you and see you next week Sunday again. Thank you. Bye.